So over the string of videos we've been working on these last few weeks, we've came a long way. We have animation on our vehicles, we have an environment, we have camera animation, and we even have a water simulation happening in our scene. So that's a lot of elements, but this still is not looking like what you're probably used to seeing in a movie theater when you go to watch an animated feature film. So the element that is missing is the lighting and rendering in this scene. So let's talk about what we mean with that word, rendering. Understand that Maya is a computer program. If I were to hit four, we see all of these points from our vertices and all of these edges that we talked about earlier. And that's how Maya is thinking about this scene. It's basing the calculations that it does off of all of these points and vertices. But the designers of the program recognize this is not appealing to look at. No one would want to watch an animated movie that looked like this. So rendering is the process of taking all of these points and faces and generating lighting, color, and texture information on them. So if I hit five, this is sort of the basic version of a render of this scene. But there's still a lot missing in this scene in terms of the lighting and the way that light interacts with objects. That is rendering. And so what we're going to do today is talk about the difference in the options Maya gives you for rendering. The first thing we're going to do is go ahead and try to render a simple image of this scene. If we go up to the status line in our user interface and click this little clapboard, it's the one with the white box and the little checker line across the top, this will render our current frame. It will render whichever viewport we have selected. So if I hit render right now, you'll say, see that this is what we get. Not very impressive, it's just a black image. Now you'll notice at the bottom of our screen the reason we're getting that black image. In our command line, you'll see we're getting a warning that says M2A, no light in scene. This is an error that we get from the Arnold render engine when we're trying to render a scene that does not have any lights in it. So that's what happened when I clicked this button is it tried to render with whatever our default render engine is. Now, a render engine is just a software program that calculates all of those points and edges and tries to turn them into a, a pretty image. Arnold is one of the software packages you can use to do that. However, Arnold is not the only software package that is used for rendering. If you look up render engines on Wikipedia, you'll find pages of different software packages that calculate how to render those points and edges. Maya has several render engines built in. We're gonna talk about a couple of them throughout these next few videos. We'll get back to Arnold later, but you'll notice that if I click on this drop-down menu, I have several other options. So I could choose Maya software and hit render. And now we're starting to see something. But let's get in there a little closer and look at one of, the, of these vehicles. So you'll see my red car. And if I hit render again, you'll see that my red car is not rendering smoothed. If I were to hit one, I'm getting that out of the render. Maya software is one of the oldest render engines currently existing in Maya. Being older, that means Maya Software Renderer does not have all of the features that some of the new render engines do. Um, although we can get some lighting and shadow in here, um, some things like Smooth Mesh Preview is not existent in there. And so if we want our objects to be smoothed, we would actually have to go back to the modeling stage and manually smooth that object. That's not the only limitation that Maya Software Renderer has, and my personal preference is that you shouldn't use this for any of the productions in this class. So, let's look at some of the other options. You'll see we also have Maya Hardware 2.0. 
Maya Hardware 2.0 is pretty interesting. If I hit render, what we're actually getting in this image is a slightly more refined version of what we're getting in our viewport, which is interesting because that means our viewport is a render engine as well. It's important to recognize that when we say render, we just mean processing these edges and faces and vertices in order to get an image. You'll notice that when I rendered in my hardware 2.0, I was able to get an image in approximately one second. You can see this at the render time at the bottom of our screen. When I rendered in Maya software, it took two seconds. And when I rendered in Arnold Renderer, it took five seconds, even though we can't see anything. This number is important. If I were rendering for an animated film, I could wait several seconds or even minutes for these renders to take place because I'm just going to compile all of those finished images into a video. And that video will play back in real time at 24 or 30 frames a second. However, imagine having to wait several seconds or even minutes for my screen to update whenever I try to tumble around Maya. That would be impossible to work with. If I needed to see that car over there, I would move my mouse and then I would wait for several seconds for the screen to render so I could actually see the car. Imagine another scenario. Many of you play 3D video games. Imagine playing one of those games where you had to wait several seconds for one frame of the character's animation to take place. That would be impossible to play. So what we're seeing in our viewport and what we're seeing in a video game is called a real-time renderer. Hardware 2.0 in Maya is also a real-time renderer. So although it says it's taking one second to render, it's rendering in under a second. In fact, we need a real-time renderer to render in 24, 30, or even 60 frames a second as we interact with it. And you'll notice that I can move my scene around and Maya continues to render all of these elements in real time. Real-time renderers are able to render so quickly because they utilize the graphics card for all of the rendering processing. So that means the only thing the graphics card has to worry about is making sure I'm able to see these images as I move around my scene. However, that also means real-time renderers usually simplify the process and how they render. That's one of the reasons that video games don't look quite as good as an animation from Pixar or Disney. Some of the calculations are so intensive and complicated that current computers are just not able to do them in real time. So now that we've talked about rendering a little bit, let's look at some of our render options. Up here next to this clapboard we clicked earlier to render our frame, if we go over to icons, we'll see another clapboard with a little cog on it. Usually that cog represents some form of settings. So I'm going to go ahead and click on this. You'll see that this is our display render settings button. Our render settings are where we're going to find all of the different options for our current render engine. You'll see I'm currently set to the Maya Hardware 2.0 render engine. Again, this is Maya's GPU or real-time render engine. So not only can I render in my viewport, I could also render out a series of images using the same render engine. We're going to explore Hardware 2.0 a little more in depth later. Let's look at some of the settings under the Common tab. You'll see that we have options like the type of images we would like to render. Currently it's set to a Maya IFF file. Nobody really uses that anymore, but you'll see we can change this to JPEG or even PNG or a PSD file. You'll see that there's some options for frame ranges that we can render, and that's currently grayed out. We'll talk a little bit more about that later. And we can see that Maya has a setting for which camera it will render, and currently it's set to perspective. 
We also see that we have an option for our image size. If I bring my render view back over, you'll see that what we're rendering is a width of 960 pixels and a height of 540 pixels. You can see that in our size down here at the bottom of our render view. However, that's smaller than most TVs or monitors. So if we were wanting to render an animation that someone could watch in full screen, we would need to render it larger than that. Some of the presets we have in here include HD 720 and HD 1080. If I change this to HD 1080 and hit render again, you'll see that Maya rendered the image again. However, you'll see it's zoomed in by twice the amount. And if I click this one to one button, it will frame our image to be the right size. There are several options in the Maya Hardware 2.0 tab here as well. We'll talk about these a little bit more in depth later. You'll see that if I switch to the Arnold renderer, now we get a whole different set of menus. We have options for the Arnold renderer and several other tabs along here as well. There's one other renderer we haven't talked about, and that's the Maya Vector renderer. If I switch to Maya Vector and hit render, it will take it a few seconds, but then you'll see we get this image. Again, I can navigate around in any window in Maya using the same shortcut keys with Alt middle click to pan and Alt right click to zoom in and out. The Maya Vector Renderer is creating vector shapes that can be taken into a vector editing software such as Illustrator. The two render engines you're going to use the most in this class are going to be Maya Hardware 2.0 and the Arnold Renderer, and we'll discuss both of those in later videos.